Mortgage forbearance, what you need to know about it and how to share great resources with your clients. And today we're going to get well with nature in Wandering Zen. Welcome to Wandering But Not Lost, your online source for finding balance so that you can align, connect, and prosper. I'm living right here and now and I don't want to miss out. Is this what life's all about? The world is calling and I'm listening. Yeah, I'm listening. And now your hosts, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Welcome to the WBNL Wandering But Not Lost podcast. This is episode 119. You can find all of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Jen O'Brien, <laughs> here we are. Here we are still stuck inside, but things are you know, slowly starting to open up a little bit. I don't know. I feel like our two states watching the news, it, it seems to me that most states are like, well, let's do this. And people, there's a percentage of people who are like crazy. Let's go back and do it. And I think there's a lot of people. What do you think? Most people are going to be, eh, let me wait and see. Let's let those other people get sick first. I really think that's going to be the majority of people. I really I do. don't know. It's interesting to see what, what just when you, you know, it's so hard because, you, you know, when they're doing any sort of interviews on the street, talking to people or, you know, calling people or whatever in surveys, um, you know, you're getting a sampling. It's just a sampling until we really get people out there doing it. You might really know what's going on. I can just tell you, it's going to be, you know, I follow theme parks obviously closely and they opened Shanghai Disneyland last week or a couple mm. days ago. Uh, very, very reduced capacity in there. A lot of social distancing rules, face masks all the time. And, mm. and they had their, you know, I think they, they were going to allow in 24,000 people was going to be the maximum for any given day in the beginning, which is a third of what they have as their maximum capacity there are their normal capacity when it's busy and um which you know still seems like a huge number of people but um but it really that that would be a huge it would feel like there was nobody there in that huge park so it's going to be interesting to see people do i just think the whole concept about eating and all of that is just weird and that the, wearing a face mask all the time sounds easy but i don't know how easy that is and, and how do you monitor and how do you patrol all that I, I just and that goes not just with the theme park that's any public gathering like that you know so it's going to be really interesting to see how this all unfolds. As time have you, uh, have you like the, I cannot get used to wearing the face mask. No, I can't either. It's hard. It's hard to breathe. I haven't found one it's hot. with glasses. It's hot. It's yeah. So uh, it's not, I don't know how people, the healthcare workers do it. But, yeah. I guess you get used you know, to it. I mean, I haven't done, I bet honestly have not been out that much in the last, no. you know, two months. So I, you know, so I haven't really had a chance to wear one for a long extended period of time, but I, I I'm having a hard time. We have to ease ourselves back into the whole reality of going out. So, you know, we're going to continue. We're continue talking on the podcast about this new normal because it's clearly not going to go back to what we used to. Life as we knew it is not returning, in my opinion, anytime soon. For it's sure. going to be a modification. And the tip I want to share today is really about uh, another way to connect with your clients and getting some good information. And I've got basically a document you can take and uh, repurpose as you want in the show notes. Just grab the content and you could use it in a variety of ways. And I'll share that. And what are you going to cover today? Yeah, you know, it's just funny. It's just, it, as time rolls on and you're in the house and, you know, you, you go through these little waves, right? If everything's great and everything's fine. This is going to be no big deal. And, you know, I'm loving being with my, you know, my loved ones and all of that. And then you get these days, it's like, oh, my gosh, I'm just ready to go do something else. You're right? It's like it's time to go, you know, do something. So, you know, we always take our lead from nature here at WBNL and, you uh, you know, we talked a lot about parks over the last few weeks here you know, with National Park Week. And last week you had Cave Week going on and we've been going to virtual, showing virtual ways to get out and see things in the national parks and in other places around the United States. I just, I, I found really over this past uh, uh, weekend uh, that even if you can't get out, and we talk about this all the time too, just getting out in your own neighborhood, in your own area is, can be extremely beneficial to your psyche. <laughs> yes. um, but, you know, with, with spring having sprung, <clears throat> Um, you know, it really is time to once again go back to that old rule that we say all the time here is you need to really stop and really look more closely at your environment to see what's going on. Because, you know, with the plants starting to come back out again and, and you can just you can feel a re, the rebirth of spring, you know, has has already been happening, but it will continue to happen for the next few months, depending on where you live in, in the world. And um, just we're just going to talk a little bit about wellness today and how you do have to take well, you really have to actually set some time aside, I think, I really do believe, to 
get yourself into some zen. So we're going to just talk about, and actually, most of the things we are talking about today are things that Jan and I have talked about before. Jan has always been into this, you know, meditation and and uh, and, and focusing on on yourself. Uh, but um, <laughs> I'm a fan of the national parks, as you know, and they have a huge wellness page on the national park website that I went to, which has a lot of the things that we talk about a lot, uh, but some other little tips too. So we're going to share that today. All right, let's jump in and talk about a really topical and timely connection for people in your database or even clients, prospects you're working with around mortgage forbearance and make sure, do, do a little quiz, make sure you're up to speed with, uh, do you know all the ins and outs of mortgage forbearance? You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. All right, everybody, we are in episode 119 of the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. Today's tip for you is something you could grab in the show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. And it's just another great, easy, simple client connection. Actually just did this in our newsletter for our team. And I'm actually going to follow the, my own advice I want to give you today and record a video on this same idea. And you have all the content that you need to get up to speed with this very quickly and to share the right information. So this is the idea. Create, be the, always be the source of information. You know, you certainly want to just give people the best advice around this. And so the, the thought here is you may have folks in your database that you know that are struggling with their mortgage payments. So this is not about tenants right now. That's there's a whole nother area, another resources. That could be a whole nother idea, by the way, if you have no people that are renting. But this is for people who own a home and maybe have lost their job or are struggling with their finances. And it's the, and, and because of the CARES Act, there's very specific points that you need to be aware of. And that's what you should share with your clients. So the idea here is to get up to speed. I'm going to go through all the key points and I'm going to give you the resources that you should go check out. Make sure you're up to speed with this and then call your clients and just check in. So it's another thing. Hopefully everybody has already checked in, but if you haven't been able to reach somebody in the last two months, it's a perfect time to call, check in and see how they're doing. And if the discussion gets around to job loss or problems with payment or do you know anyone who might be struggling with this? I have a great, you know, info uh, sheet that I could send to you that you could pass on. That's always another way to do it, right? You don't have to simply say, maybe you're having problems. Maybe you know someone who's having problems. So you call your clients. If that comes up, you can talk about it. You can share this information I'm going to share with you today in an email or a newsletter, write a blog post about it, put it on social media, record a short video, right? And then post that on social media. So it's just get the word out, right? Text it to people. All right, so first of all, forbearance is not forgiveness. That's the most important thing to share with people is that all it is, is uh, you still owe the money, but you might be able to work it out with the loan servicing company to have a balloon payment, to have it worked into their amortization over the life of their loan, or to tack it on at the end. Those are generally the things that have happened. But here's what's important to know. We've always had forbearance uh, during the last short sale crisis. Um, this was the first way that a lot of people worked out before they to try to get caught up before they got into a short sale situation or, or unfortunately a foreclosure. But the CARES Act has very specific provisions in it. OK, so there's, first of all, there's two links, one to the Consumer um, uh, Protection um, Bureau, Consumer Finance Protection Bureau, the CFPB. You definitely want to go check that out and send that link to your clients. There's a video there. And then I have a really excellent article from Market Watch that explains the key points of the CARES Act for mortgage forbearance. And plus, I also found a hardship letter, a template for a hardship letter, which is something that your people need to be able to do. So here are the key provisions in the CARES Act. Number one, um, it, the forbearance agreement, which, by the way, needs to get it, be put in writing. You have to recommend to your clients that they get it in writing, because I think what's a lot of things that's already happened, Matt, is people are calling up their loan servicer and they're like, yeah, no problem. You can skip the next couple payments, but then right. nothing is formalized. And then I think those people are going to be surprised because as soon as that, that thing is lifted, uh, it's going to be, Oh, by the way, you have a balloon payment of $10,000. Right. Okay. So, you know, basically you have to call and you can pause your payments and then work out some kind of an agreement. Um, the next thing to know is it has to be under federally backed mortgages. So what does that mean? Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, FHA, VA, or USDA loans also. So those are the ones that are covered by these key points. It's not to say that if somebody doesn't have one of those government-backed loans that they couldn't call their loan servicer and still work something out. Obviously, you have to tell them to do that. But there's very specific guidelines that they have to follow 
because of the CARES Act. So here's the first big thing. Um, it can be up to 180 days. That's six months of forbearance, okay? And then at that point, if the person is still facing financial difficulty, they can request an extension of another 180 days. Wow. I didn't know that. That was like yeah, huge, okay? That's, that is huge. Uh, here's a couple other key points to know. During this more mortgage forbearance period, the mortgage servicers cannot report negative stuff to the credit bureaus, the three top, you know, TransUnion Credit, um, Equifax, and Experian. They cannot uh, charge late fees and they can't uh, have it hit, hit their credit. All right. So a couple things also that we have for you today is, and that just grab these links and put this in this whole email idea or newsletter that you're going to do is if people don't know if they have a Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, they probably know if they have a VA loan. They might not know if they have an FHA loan. I've got the right. links to where you can go to look up. You put your information in there. It tells you who owns your loan. Okay. And um, here is what your people need to get ready to do. Be ready to answer these questions. This is generally, this is what the CFPB is saying. Ha be ready to answer these questions. Do your research, then contact your servicer and be ready to say, why can't you make your payments? Is the problem you're facing temporary or permanent? And what's the current state of your income, expenses, other assets, money in the bank? And be ready to submit a letter. You want to submit a hardship letter because you need to document like it's a case. It's just like short sale days. You started a case, you submitted the letter on such and such date, um, you know, and now you have a, a paper trail, okay? Uh, they, they may ask if you're a service member too with a permanent change of station because always if you're military being changed, then they always work out some details for you. So the best advice overall is to tell people to call their servicer. Now, the servicer may not be the person who did their loan. So they might've got a loan through Wells Fargo and now someone else is the servicer. So how do they know that? They got to look at their mortgage statement. Most people don't get mortgage statements anymore. So they right. got to go online and anywhere you go online or in your mortgage statement, there should be, who do you call? Uh, all right, write a hardship letter and then this great article with a template in it where you actually, whoever wrote this article, I forget, it's like a mortgage company, mortgage reports, very good hardship letter because it, it references these key points in the CARES Act. As you know, you know, uh, you can't report me to the blah, blah, blah. It's, it's written nicely. Okay. But it's, it's citing the CARES Act provisions. So get it in writing, watch out for balloon payments. Um, make sure you, you advise people to discuss all the payment options. Like they have to be their own best advocate. They have to just keep asking. So knowledge is power. If they can call and say, look, I don't want a balloon payment. What are some other options? They could have it be, so if they have a 30 year mortgage and they miss four payments, they could tack those four payments on at the end. That's common. So now you have a 30 year and four month, uh, you know, loan. The, but the reality is you can make extra payments. Things get better. You could catch up. You could make extra payments. Making one extra payment a year, as you know, can shorten your loan. The other thing is you they may you may get them to amortize the amount. So if somebody really does miss four to six months, maybe they can re-amortize the loan and make small make your payment a little bit higher to uh, cover all those costs, right? Um, and then the last thing here is if somebody really is having challenges beyond six months into a year, um, now this was a big deal in the short sale days because people's interest rates were so high, uh, is to look at a loan modification. Loan modifications would be the next step. And, but if somebody got a loan a couple of years ago, they probably already have a great interest rate. So I don't know if an interest rate is going to, uh, a modification to their loan is going to help. Um, but there, that's a possibility as well. So, all right. So those are the tips. Um, this is all written in a, a way that you could just grab the content, put it in your own email or put it in your own newsletter. And then you have content to send out and reasons to call people and just give them all the best advice and then follow up the phone call with this fact sheet, if you will, with the resources in it. And, I and think really, at the end of the day, at end of the day, is it really just, you, you know, you can sit around and worry about all of this, right? But you have to start asking questions. You have to start doing something to be your own advocate, like you had said, and, and just see what you can, what can be done. A lot of, uh, you know, everyone's in the same boat right now. So, I mean, there's a lot more, uh, there's more opportunities now than there have been in the past. You know, in, a, in a previous newsletter, a previous month, there you can just be the source of the source. There's all kinds of coronavirus state. I mean, if you haven't done this already, just go check right. out your governor's site or any of your representatives' sites. They have all the resource links for all consumers. That's the kind of stuff that we need to be doing to be the source of the source for our clients and be that information that they, they they know that you're staying on top of it and we're not just going, oh, do you need to buy or sell a house? You're you're helping people by being useful, providing information, being the export expert. And just don't forget, guys, it's like use the multimedia approach. You can create little infographics about this kind of information. You can post it on Instagram and, and Facebook and 
uh, put a blog post up and, and use video. And these are the ways that you're going to continue to sh be, show yourself as the expert in the, in the area and get people to keep you top of mind when they have um, questions where they need to buy or sell or they need to refer somebody that needs to buy or sell. Right. All right. That's it for today. Mortgage Forbearance 101. You know everything that you should know uh, based on the CARES Act right now. And things could change. So you got to stay on top of that as well. But that is the info as we know it today. Come take my hand and see the world around you. The time is right, just let the lights surround you. And step by step, you feel it coming alive. The feeling deep down inside. The best memories are made when you take the road less traveled. Visit wanderingbutnotlost.com for some inspiration. Today on Wanderings In, we are talking about wellness in nature, or how you can actually continue to make yourself be well. If you just focus on nature a little bit, I have found really over the last few weeks talking to people that people are starting to get COVID-19 a little bit in their head. And some of them are getting a little bit behind the eight ball on it and starting to get a little bit depressed about the whole thing or, or uncertain, more worried than they were, say, a month ago about what the future of and where we're really going with this. And the fact of the matter is we just don't know. So do you think, do you think that has a lot to do with like in the beginning, we're like, okay, we can do this. It's like 30 yeah. days or something or whatever. And now it's like, we could be like this for a long time. And that's what's starting, I think. To get I, you know, I really think it's starting to set in with some people that this is, this is not a joke and this may be, it I mean, we're approaching, way overnight. <laughs> hey, we're, yeah, exactly. We're approaching. He didn't 000. kill it. Apparently yeah. He didn't kill it. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Exactly. Cause it's been freaking 90 degrees for three weeks. Um, you know, and we're approaching a hundred thousand um, lost lives, which is a horrible, horrible number. And I feel so badly for the people that have experienced that firsthand, you know, and what they must be feeling about, not only just the fact that it happened in the first place, but perhaps the response and everything. I mean, so there's a lot, there is a lot to this that's going to be going on for a long time. So, you know, not that we can, can cure the world, even though we certainly try every week. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one thing that Jan and I've talked about since we, the inception of WBNO coaching really is work-life balance and, and trying to make sure that you are focusing on yourself and, and your own personal maintenance um, at, at least a little bit every, every week to keep yourself safe and sane. So mm -hmm. I'm going to put in the show notes today links to other podcasts and other blog posts that we've done over the years that just focus back on the <clears throat> kind of the, hey, taking care of your mental health a little bit more and, and Lord knows there is so there is so much out there you know from just apps you know app. it's funny I went on calm the other day I hadn't been on calm in a long time Mm -hmm. And I went on call the other day. Actually, I just love the commercial that comes on TV. Yeah, that, that got you it, thinking about it. Didn't yeah, it? that it's raining, right? And it's like, you know, do nothing for 30 seconds. I mean, it's it's really Great it's commercial, really right? Yeah. Like the commercial we, is helping you. Oh, absolutely. Right Talk about yeah. something that sells a product. Well, <laughs> that, that, you, you know, and the the breathing techniques that your sister has uh has you know trained on for for years and years those are very very helpful now when things start getting a little bit stressful in your life and i you know even if the everything is going fine in your world there is still that whole feeling of not of the unknown and not what's going you know not knowing what's going right. on another thing we've been talking about for full 119 episodes of the wbnl podcast is getting up and getting out and i think that now more than ever um that is a really important thing that you need to be uh need to be doing for for sure uh, getting up and getting out <clears throat> safely, of course, is super important. But I, I you know, and, and uh, by social distancing, we talked, we've talked about this over the last few episodes since all this uh, shelter in place has happened. It seems like more people are out walking, more, more people out, you know, getting a little bit of exercise and doing, or you see them more at one time anyway, mm -hmm. um, which I, which I love. And people are being very respectful, I believe, you know, as far as, you know, keeping their distance and doing their thing. So, you know, that, that's great. I'm seeing more masks now, which is interesting. I wasn't seeing a lot of masks in the beginning when I was doing some walking, but I'm starting to see more masks, which I think is, uh, you know, kind of the side of the times. I think people are hearing that as things open back up, masks are going to be a part of the deal. Yeah. So I think people are either trying to get used to it because, you know, we talked about in the last segment that, you know, neither you or I are really uh, uh, used to that quite yet. But um, um, once again, there's so many different ways you can actually get get out and get, you know, get, take, a, take a, a moment or two to kind of relax in nature. And I have found really over the last few weeks as spring has started to sprung uh, or sprang, spring has sprang. Uh, spring has sprung. Just to, to see what's happened, you know, with, with the plants. And Janet, I always have talked about how you really, if you stop anywhere you are and really just look 
more closely at your surroundings, you're going to find little things that you probably would just walk back, walk on by if you didn't, uh, you, you know, if you didn't actually take that time to look a little bit, a little bit more closely. And I think those are the kind of things mm -hmm. that we need to be more aware of and, and really be hyper focused of your surroundings because, and here's a good point of this, not in a way. I have a friend on Instagram who is taking a picture out of her window. And I don't know if it's her bedroom window or upstairs window or what it is out of her window once or twice a day and posting it on Instagram. And you can see just in the short, you know, what, 50, 55 days, however long this has been, that there is a change in the view outside of her room. Wow. And I think it is the coolest little exercise because That's if cool you are idea. not looking at that on a regular basis and looking at the detail of that, you're going to miss that because mm -hmm. you don't see it. You just don't see it. And I think it's a very, very cool thing. Uh, things that have been keep, keeping me going over the last um, the last month and a half or so is we have a lot of succulents in our yard. We live in California. You know, we're trying to be water wise here. So we have a lot of, of cacti. And, you know, people always uh, that aren't that don't have a lot of cactus around. Uh, don't really know the beauty of, of cactus because they all bloom. And right now is blooming season for the cactus that we have in our yard. And it is amazing. We have one cactus. I, I know the name of it, but I can't pronounce the name of it. So I'm not going to do it here. But it has a beautiful bloom on it, almost like a water lily that mm -hmm. comes out of that thing. It's this beautiful pink bloom. It'll uh, Last year when we had one bloom on that cactus and it comes out, you can see it kind of coming out. Matter of fact, we are, I don't know if you're familiar with the uh, the play or the movie Little Shop of Horrors, yes. but it kind of looks like Audrey. It's like this weird little thing coming out, and then all of a sudden it opens to this gorgeous bloom on the flower, and then a day and a half later, it's gone. I mean, it is a quick. Did you post little, it? Yeah, uh, I haven't posted it. I, uh, I have a picture of it. I haven't really felt great the last couple of days, so I've been a little out of it. But mm -hmm. I am going to post that picture. It is. It is so beautiful. And then this year there were two blooms on that flower. So mm -hmm. it's weird how so. Every morning I usually get up and I, this is my routine. Jan talks about a morning routine a lot. I will get up and I will have my coffee and my yogurt or something. We have a little breakfast nook and I look out the window and that particular cactus is right out of the slider right there. Mm -hmm. And it's was it's cool to watch that whole thing happen. And that, that cactus has become a very big part of my morning, you know, like to get up and get out there with my, my coffee to go see what's happening with that. Uh, that cactus. And to yesterday, the second flower was in full bloom. This morning, it was still there, but not quite as beautiful. So tomorrow, that that, that show for the, for the year will be gone. And I'm telling you that, I mean, it would have been hard for me to miss that because I just look for things like that. But really, in a, in a matter of three days or four days, probably, that all came and went. And if you are just walking wow. by things and not paying attention to what's going on, that was a little bit of joy that uh, I brought, that was brought into my life that, uh, that I really, really appreciated. And then I started looking around and like I said, I do this anyway. It's the but small things though. It is, you know, I just mean, like the, that, the that story of the, your friend just looking out her window. I mean, it just shows that you don't need all this other stuff to just zero in on what's in front of you. What's you don't. Your, I will, but I'll try to put a link to her Instagram account because like I said, it's nothing. I mean, it's literally a sensor window. When she first started doing it, I'm like, what the heck is this? And it, like after the second day, I'm like, uh-huh. Because you see it in Same. a certain light or a certain weather condition or, you know, and the, the grass grows. And I mean, it's really, really interesting mm. to see. So I think it's a, it was a fascinating, one of the, the cooler things that I've seen um, online. But just getting back to other things you can do, you know, we've already talked about getting out and, and taking a walk. Obviously, that's an important thing. It just gets your, you know, first of all, it's good exercise. You know, get your blood rushing, clears your head. Does a lot of things that are very, 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 uh, advantageous right now with everything that's going on. But so you, sh you really need to do that. If you can do that by yourself, maybe listen to a podcast, listen to some music, you know, whatever, you know, however you like to relax, you know, doing it with others is great too. You know, my uh, wife and I will go on a little walk uh, or try to go on a walk every little evening too, just so you kind of just talk about things and just kind of connect in a way. And I'm finding, and I know we've talked about this in one of the previous podcasts, that, that people out walking <laughs> tend to be a little more eager to talk to you as well, which, you know, it's not like they're rude in the past, but people were in their zone. And I do find that I'm talking to more people when I'm outside now. It's really, it's interesting because people have a, there's a need, right? Um, you know, obviously <clears throat> there's a lot of things that you can, you can hone in on when you're out in nature beyond the plant life and everything as well, or even talking to people. I have found <clears throat> 
probably because of the weather or the uh, air condition air quality that's happening uh, and it being so much better the, there are there seem to be a lot more birds and if there aren't more birds you're certainly hearing more birds than you True. did before and i think that that is another thing that you kind of take for granted in your daily life but if you start to you know when you're walking around or even sitting in your house and have the window open or something just listening it, it talk about something that can take the blood pressure you know from yeah. here well you know way 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 down so you know I it's have just to ask uh, knowing yeah. your place because of um, cat and house sitting for you yeah. um, i know that i enjoyed and i'm enjoying it here in my house is hummingbirds do you, oh, still have yeah. a, do, you have, do you still have a little pair of hummingbirds that visits your tree? Yeah, and, and actually, you know, it, I've seen more hummingbirds walking around too, which is a really interesting thing. Walking around? Yeah, I mean, you know, just because you can see them, they they have a very distinct flight, you know, the way oh, they, yeah. they dart around. Yeah. You know, I've yeah. seen more yeah. while walking around. Uh, you oh, know. I thought you were like, what do you mean? You no, no, I mean, well, You've actually caught walking. some hummingbirds stopping and walking? Yeah, there's some birds hey. walking around. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there seriously. is a there's a Love field them. outside of our uh, our place at this time of year is just filled with mustard plant. Yeah. So it's just this or a yellow field, and you can see there's a lot more bees around right now. There's a lot more uh, hummingbirds around right now. It's just really interesting uh, to see that. You know, something that I have kind of picked up from my uh, neighbors actually, uh, they were doing a lot. Their kids are young, and they do a lot of chalk drawing. Mm -hmm. Uh, in their in their yard and stuff, and I have noticed also as I've walked around the the area that there are a lot more people doing stuff like that where they're actually and this is kind of a cool idea. Uh, you you know if you in in your sidewalk out in front of your place or in the street out in front of your house or whatever it is, if you happen to have some of that 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 shot, go go put a hopscotch. Uh, go draw a hopscotch uh -huh. board out in front of your house, and, and and not like you have to sit up there and stalk your own uh, your own artwork. But you will probably be surprised how many people will hopscotch through that thing. Leave, as a, little, leave a little rock. Let people, that, it's, it's open for hopscotch. I know exactly. Yeah, the street is open for hopscotch. So I I thought that was kind of interesting. Something that we have not done yet, and we talk about all the time is uh, because we are, haven't gotten a chance to get up and go out to the national parks is uh, we're going <clears> to <throat> set up the tent in their house. And I'm not sure if I brought this up in a prior podcast or not, mm, but so. um, we have a, just a small little two man tent and we thought, you know, how let's go camping. So we might even do that this weekend is set the tent up, put up our, get our little sleeping bags in there, get out our little lights, uh, you know, put on some uh, sleep out there in the living room and you're, yeah, sleep, and you're sleep, inside you tent. Go, go, Camping in the living room, because there's a thousand things you can be doing, you know, to recreate your outdoor experience while you're indoors. What we would probably do during that, which is a little, uh, is a little bit of a cheat on camping, but we have a ton of videos that we've made over the years in our national park uh, tours and stuff. And we will probably lay in our tent and watch our videos from the national parks, which is kind of cool, right? Nice. Just a way to, um, to, to get out in a, in a little bit more of an, uh, a, um, immersive way, I suppose, is uh, I love it. one way to do that. So we're, we're thinking about doing that. I think that it's important always to separate yourself from your work and your lunch period or taking a break every once in a while. And I think, you know, the, the one of the nicest things you can do is, you know, grab yourself a sandwich or, you know, make yourself a little lunch and then go outside and actually eat that food. You know, it's once again, it's it, you don't have to do a lot and it can just be in your own yard. You don't have to go on some big expedition. You can, you know, just get out of the environment, get into nature a little bit and take your breaks there just to just to to to, to mix up your day a little bit. Fresh air is good for you. I'm telling you, getting out of the house is a, a fab, a fantastic thing. You need to do your walks. I already talked about that. I have a little list here that I'm going down. So pardon me. Uh, uh, and then, you know, we've done so many things over the last few weeks about virtual webcams and, and videos and, and activities you can do, you know, all that's available and all of it's great. I'm not knocking any of that. I think it's fantastic because it takes you to places that you aren't able to go to right now. But I really think that you have to carve out a moment of your day, no matter what you decide that that moment is going to look like and for you to actually get up and get out of the house and go do something outside. I think it's really important that we don't become, uh, uh, you know, actually all locked up into our our computers we're on the computer all day long i mean i i i have always i try to monitor my uh screen time as much as i possibly can i always have but i do find that i'm on my phone or my i'm on something all the time now and it's just you have got to take a break from that totally. once you agree jan 
Yeah. And I actually think during this, I've been better at balancing all that out. I had a tendency before to be on the go all the time and not stop and have lunch. Right. Or That's even, true. Even eat breakfast. And I've been doing that. I've been better at my morning routine and stopping and taking a lunch break consistently. It's good. Yeah, and I've that, been just, I've been more productive. I think I've, I actually feel like I've worked. I need a break. I'm ready to take a vacation. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, actually, well, we've talked about that, right? seems like we've been busier in the last four, you know, 45, 50 days than we were way before that. So mm -hmm. anyway, uh, so that's just a couple tips that we could, that, that, that we're, that we're offering up today just to bring a little bit of the nature, you know, into your life. If you haven't already done that, we, you know, I feel like we it would do kind of, it's like a broken record with us because we do talk about it all the time. We practice as much as we possibly can ourselves. Uh, but I really do recommend that you don't do it if you haven't already started to experience some of that yourself because it can be really, really good for your for your aid during all of the the the, the, the COVID-19 that's going on in the world right now. We have a ton of stuff over in the show notes, other tips. We have a couple of videos in the show notes over there as well as along with some pictures. So go check out the show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com or wanderingbutnotlost.com. And, you know, just get up and get out, people. You know, we're all going to get through this. We've talked about that before. Uh, just just do it, people, and be forever just wandering but not lost. Exactly. Just do it. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. Well, that's a wrap on the WBNL Wandering Without Lost podcast. This was episode 119. You can find all of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. John Brian, that was another good segment on how you can manifest your own um, your own new normal, right? And uh, what's going on right now? And from mortgage be the, be the expert. One. Be the expert. Be the resource. You're the COVID nineteen expert. Right. And that's just one tip. And before we go today, I just want to wish oh. Matt Emerson. A happy birthday. Yeah, no, Brian. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. It's his birthday tomorrow. He's older than me. I As we am. record this, May 16th. Happy birthday. What are your birthday plans, Matt Emerson? We are actually going to go for a little drive tomorrow. So get this one. <clears throat> I'm not sure if this is really going to be happening, but I think it's going to. I have been jonesing for a Shake Shack burger. <laughs> go get the, yourself a Shake Shack. The closest Shake Shack? Long Beach. So Ooh. we're going to go on a little drive, I think, out to, uh, tomorrow to well, Long Beach. Well, at least Beach. go get the ocean, get to see yeah, it. And exactly. actually, we, you California know what? beaches are open. You just have to Some of them are open. Yeah. The, um, uh, a couple weeks ago, we drove down to San Diego County, did a little drive around. Last week, we went up to LA, did a little drive around. So we haven't really been out to the beaches yet. So we're going to do a little beach drive tomorrow. And I think that's going to be a nice little outing for the day. And then we'll probably come back and watch something on TV, what, what, have you what have you watched anything? What what's been your latest? Oh, I will tell you what I got that it was just awesome and it's worth it. Is I got a, I upgraded to the new iPhone 11, uh -huh. and with the iPhone 11 came a free one year subscription to the Apple Plus oh, Apple, uh, TV. Apple TV. Yeah, and I am almost done watching the morning show. Excellent with uh, Jennifer Anis Aniston, Reese Witherspoon. It's excellent. You know, oh, she, cool. won gold, she won a Golden Globe, I think, for it, and it's brilliant. That I would definitely recommend it. It's worth getting it to watch. That you guys would love it. Awesome. Well, there's a good tip right there. The morning show. The morning show. <laughs> All right. Well, that's going to be a wrap. Okay. See you next time on the Wondering But Not Lost podcast. Bye bye. Thank you.